Hey everybody, this is uh, me again, and uh, based on request, I'm going to do the last video about core data, which is lifting the records from the core data into a table view. Okay, now you could do the same thing for if you want to use a collection view, it would be very similar. Okay, so what you need here, this is what we have. We had the, uh, if you remember, the last video, we were able to the, uh, save the data and find it and uh, uh, encode data and show it on this view controller. Now, to list it in the date table view, we need to include a table view controller first. So I add the view, table view controller. And usually with a table view controller, you need to go to another, navigate to like uh, detail screens or another screen. So we embed it into uh, uh, a navigation controller. So from the editor, you select editor and then embed into navigation controller. All right, and then we'll make this the navigation controller as my starting point. Oh, I think I did it wrong. So command Z. We want this guy to be the starting point, and then this is embed into editor, embed into navigation controller. All right. Now we'll get back to the last part in a minute. Now, here's your cell. This cell, we need to do a couple things to it. First of all, let's make it subtitle. And you can, of course, have your own custom and you can design your own cell, but for now, just, we will do it subtitle. So it'll have a title text and it'll have a subtitle and then have an image. So now, the last part, before we actually look at the code, we need to give this as an identifier, the cell and identifier. So I'm gonna call it cell. We use identifier, okay? All right, now if you run it, it doesn't do you any, anything right now. It doesn't do any good. So what we need to do is that we need to tie a table, a, uh, a class, a custom class to this table view to in order to populate the data. I have already a class, it's called list store table view controller. Now you can, in, you, you could create one, and to create one, you just say file, new, uh, file, then you select cook a touch, and you need to select, first of all, you need to select, it's a table view controller, and then you give it a name, okay, X, Y, Z, whatever, okay. I already have that, so I'm gonna cancel it, and then look at the one that we have here, all right? So first, let me tie these two together. In the identity inspector, I'm gonna select the list stores table view controller, okay? Now in the table view controller, when you create a table view controller, you get few functions already for you, okay? So the class is a table view controller. The first thing we need to do is that you need to import the core data, just like you previous, uh, previously what we've done in the other courses, the other classes. The next thing we need to do is that we need to define an array of stores. Now, remember in the last video, we did the store, the, in the first video, I think, we have created a model, and then we, create, we generated the class for that model, so it's called stores. So I have a class called stores. All right, after that, <clears throat> we need to define the managed object context, which is again very similar to what we've done before. So these, this you have to do, just copy it from the previous class. If you remember in the view controller that we have, we have the same line of code, managed object, you just copy it and paste it in there. Okay, now if you go back and then look at the view did load. Here it is where it is a little bit different than what we uh, you've done before as i was telling you is that you need to run a request you need to run a f uh, run a fetch request but without a predicate okay so what you do is that you get the you get the entity description just like what we've done before and the name of the class or the entity is what stores you create a request and then you set the request uh, the fetch request, you set, the, you set the entity description for the fetch request 
the one we just created here, the entity description. So I am querying this table, all right? Now, here we need to do try and catch because we might, this, this block of code, getting the data, the fetch request, again, it might fail, so I include it in a do and a catch clause. Do, so you open do and a bracket, and then a catch clause at the end. Okay, inside that do, what do we need to do? We not we need to run that query that I created without a predicate again, and we store the result in the array that we created above here. All right, so we check: do I have record or not? Based on the count that I receive, this this where this, um, we store it in this stores, of course, the array we created above. If this has no record, that means I don't have anything. But if I do have record, what will happen? I tell the, I tell the table of view to reload the data. Based on what? Based on the new result that we've got. So this happens when in the view did load. Okay. If we don't have anything and say no data, message, no record were found. Okay. If we have an error, we will get, we will have an alert showing that error message. Okay, now if you remember in the previous course, I have a class, like a custom class that, uh, that has called alert. And then instead of repeating the same thing over and over again, I just simply call a method in this class, uh, class function to display the errors. Okay, let's go back to the table view controller. All right, so that is all you have to do in the view did load. You, uh, you get the entity description, create a request, fetch that request, you check the values, you check the count if you have record or not. If you do, you reload the data, otherwise you display error messages. Okay, now with the, when you create the table of view controller, as I told you, you will get two Three things that are important. One of them is a the number of section. One of them is a the number of uh, records, rows. And then one of them, how to populate that cell. Now, the number of section is one. The number of records or rows depends on the array, how much we have in the array. If we have one, it will be one, two, two, and so forth. And the last bit is this one here, where we populate the cell itself. So this should be already in your code. This, is, this part will be commented out. All you have to do is that usually it is like this. It's commented out. You will have to uncomment it, okay? You uncomment it, and then you will get the basics. You'll get the basic function. You'll have to change this from, uh, I think it's DQ cell identifier or something like that, cell identifier to cell. Okay, so whatever we put in there, we put in here. And I've done many videos on the table of view. Okay, you should, so you should be familiar with that. So I get the cell with that identifier. After that, I need to get the record based on the row that I want to populate. So I get something called index path dot row, and then that will give me, I use that to get the record from the array. And then finally, I just set the values, the sort description, the store name, because the this, this store, if you remember, the store has what? It has, this is the extension, it has the, all the details and the image as NS data. So if you go back to the uh, table view controller, I get the store description, the store name, and convert the data into a UI image and assign it to the UI image, the image view that comes with the cell. These three come with subtitle cell, okay? And return the cell. That's all you have to do to display the data. Later on, we'll talk about how we go to the next screen showing the details. So now if you run this, watch what happens. I already have a record in there. So here's a record, but it doesn't do you any good. 
Okay. Now, just to show you that it actually works, I'm going to go to the view control. I'm going to go to the main store and make, move that arrow from here to here. And then add another record. And then we can call it ABC. Uh, anything here. And then let's just select any point in here. And then that's it. Save. All right, so it's stored in the device. Now, if I change that back to here, and then we click on OK here, and again, you'll see what we have. We have two records now instead of one. Get stuck here. All right, right again. All right, so we got the two records. So the next step is to do what is actually I want to click on this. Oh, before we do that, let's create on a plus sign here to add a new record. Okay, so what do you do? In the table of view control, in the navigation controller here. And there is something called here. Um, tab toolbar just type in bar I always get confused by this one there is bar button item you see that one and then you just click it and drag it on top of here now we need to change a couple things here we want to make this as instead of custom we want to make it add so we get the plus sign and from here we want to go to here Okay, and then what you select, you select show. And so it'll take me to the screen. So let me click on OK. Now you got, you click the plus, it will take you to the next screen. You can add, and then you can go back. Of course, you can add, uh, there's a problem here, right? What's the problem? The problem is that this field is, way above of course we have to do the auto layout to do it properly so i'm going to move everything down a little bit for now all right okay so click on the plus now we have, we can add another record. But oh, there's, there's a problem. The problem is that this record is there. When you go back, it's not listed. But if you stop it and run it, you'll actually see it. So what we want to do in order to do this, to actually when we come back, refresh the data. Well, you could do, there's several ways to do it, but the easiest way, you can go back to the view controller. The code right now that we have is where, this code is where, in the view that load. There's another one that you can do, which is called view will appear. The view will appear Every this code is executed every time. Now we need to do function view. Uh, I'm actually inside a function, that's why. View will appear. Oh, 
why it not? It should do the override itself. Uh, okay, here we go. So in here, what do you do? You can put that code that I put in here, this code, you see this? You can just take it out again, remove it from the view did appear or view did load, command X, and then put it in this view will appear. So every time the view will appear, it would refresh, reload the data from the core data. And that is okay because you're not actually going over the network, okay? You're just doing it uh, locally on, on the core data, okay? So if you add another record, and you click on save, and you can go back. Now you see it appeared at the end. All right. That is it. Now, to do the editing, what you need to do, you will have to, a little bit of work, okay? It needs some little bit of work. If you have, uh, and I've done it previously in previous uh, videos, but I will leave it to you, all right? I think this is enough for now. Um, if there is a need for it, I'll do it again. But look at my previous core data, it's the same concept, the one that we did for Swift 1.2, it's the same concept, okay? So you can, you can view it in the previous video. Hopefully this has helped, and I'll see you in the next video.